Welcome back, Wolfpack! Verl is here in the side to use Buswool. So just like Feromosa, Buswool is going to be a bug fighting typing, and that means that we have a good amount of resistances and a good amount of weaknesses as well. Flying. Not even once. Four times super effective, unless you know you can finish off like a flying type Pokemon that has 3% or so of its hit points left. Just don't even give it a try. On that fire is going to threaten us. Fairy is a pretty big one. And Psychic, we see it from time to time, so it's not going to be a huge concern. But just do note that if the Pokemon can carry Psychic, that you still are at risk. But we do have some resistances, so at least we can bring in Buzzwool into Fighting, Ground, Bug, Grass, or Dark type moves. Then neutrally, it's going to be okay. Offensively, our, our same type attack boosting is going to be really interesting because we get a good amount of super effective hits But look at that wall of resistances and we don't even have options against some of these things like fairy That's completely walled flying poison ghost. We don't get to hit those for anything So that's where the rest of our coverage will be it will be non-stab But super effectively we hit some good targets steel ice grass psychic like, That's gonna be pretty nice. We get the overlap on dark and we do get to hit normal and rock type Pokemon so I don't even say high risk, high reward. It's just kind of like it's consistent and it has highs and lows. Looking at the stats of Buzzwool, it's weird because we have nothing specially. Like 53 on the special attack, excellent. That means we just got more stats into our attack or hit points or defense or whatever. But 53 special offense means special attack, super effective special attacks. Like we see a flamethrower, we see a fairy type special attack or anything, and that is going to be really bad for us. Even with the 107 hit points, the special attacks are still going to be very threatening. However, 107 hit points, 139 defense. Even without any defensive investment, that is tanky. That is monstrous. That means if the opponent has physical attackers, they are not going to be able to do any damage to us. And we do have the 139 on the attack as well, which is a still a really big number at the same time that we could also go and look at the speed 79 speed so not ridiculous sweeper but it is doable when you kind of break it down then all right we can scarf that that's decent scarf range and which means we are going to be relying on a 139 unboosted on life orb whatever kind of attack right there and we're going to see if we can make it work on the buzzwool see what kind of coverage we're getting on the buzzwool i mean we get Electric and Ice Punch. Boom. Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, that works out pretty well. Thunder Punch isn't as favorable, but the Ice Punch will definitely be usable. No Fire Punch, however. Maybe Tutor in, fit in a future generation, but who knows for there. And then as we can see, it's going to be just a lot of, you know, we run our bug, we run our fighting maybe, and then we go for something else. So we do get extra coverage on top of that. We have the Earthquake, we have the Bulk Up. So if we want to gain some stats, we can cut our coverage and go for very high stats right there. Bulldoze, Rock Slide, Poison Jab is going to be useful against those Fairy-type Pokemon. Earthquake against the Fire-type Pokemon. So we have some options to carry through. And then we get to see Fell Stinger. Now, I haven't really talked about the Fell Stinger buff, but it goes plus three. If you KO an opponent with his 50, now buff to 50 base attack move, you gain plus three on the Fell Stinger. Game Freak was like, fine. We, we like Fell Stinger. None of you guys use Fell Stinger? No, we're going to make you use Fell Stinger. So you can scarf into Fell Stinger, and on a Beast Boost Pokemon especially, you go plus four, because you get the Beast Boost on the attack, and then plus three, and then that means now you're at plus four. So three times your attack in one turn off of that. That's going to be huge amounts of damage, but it also is something you that you will have to pay attention to. And then we have Leech Life. So Leech Life also getting a buff. Now 80 base power in the 7th generation. Leech Life got a really big buff. And remember, it heals you. That when you use Leech Life, it heals you. And you guys might, if it wasn't for Zubat back in the first generation, no one would know what Leech Life does because it was so bad in earlier generations. Now it's, now it's insane. Now Buzzwool gets a better than Drain Punch. Like, it's okay that we don't get Drain Punch because we have a better than Drain Punch healing move stab with 80 base power so yeah and then we have that physical defense so the opponent does damage to us physically we just hit him with drain or we just hit him with the leech life and then we get everything back boom big damage right there we also have lunge 100 chance to lower the opponent's attack so if they were doing damage to us with like fire punch or some kind of physical attack not anymore then we also have superpower for just huge fighting damage extra fighting coverage is a little lacking hammer arm kind of we don't get low kick, we get the low sweep, and then it's also, alright, we get we get superpower and stuff like that. No drain punch, so brick break will be your consistent option. But I feel like if you're running the scarf, you can safely use that superpower. And Buff Swole is in a really unique situation on that superpower. Because when you think about it, superpower is going to work with your beast boost. That a 120 stab base power move with a Pokemon with this high of an attack is actually going to be able to KO Pokemon neutrally, or at least get the insane amounts of damage that it needs, and then it lowers your attack and defense. Well, 
We are not we don't really care about our defense going down because we're trying to be a sweeper Pokemon that while we can take those defensive hits We really don't want to be getting hit at all and then our attack gets lowered But then beast boost brings it back up and now we're doing a neutral superpower again So that's why we can run the choice scarf on the buzzwool. So 79 speed I mean, we have to go jolly, we have to get the most out of it, but now we are going to be finding really big outspeeds on a lot of Pokemon. We outspeed like the Mega Lop Bunny, we outspeed 135 base speed Pokemon, we can get up into like the 140s range, and then we only have to start worrying about other Scarf Pokemon that are running beneficial speed natures and are already faster than us. So overall, we're going to clean up pretty well. And also when you think about it, if that Pokemon's Scarfing, they're giving up lots of damage as well, so it's just going to be who wins out in the end, and if it's a physical attacker, seems like it should be you. Now I didn't want to take this time to also just think about it guys, Buzzwool is still in the top 50 of physical attackers with that 139 on the attack and this made me think about Ultra Beast in a really weird way and that you think about them like they're beasts, they have these crazy stat distributions. You look at some of these other ones, like you look at the Cartana and you're like, wow, this Pokemon just going to sweep everything. You look at Celesteela, you look at pretty much anything, the Feromosa, like any of the Ultra Beasts, you're thinking, wow, this thing is like a perfected sweeper Pokemon, or it, it really excels to the point where you can actually forget that, yo, there's a lot of Pokemon that wish they were even close to that level. Like, Buzzwool's still a 139 defensive Pokemon with 107 hit points. You know, few Pokemon get over 90 hit points. Few Pokemon get into good defensive range. And then, the, there's still less than, you know, 50 that are only able to be stronger than it. And sometimes, just barely. So, Buzzwool is in a unique position, even with that 79 on that speed into the 139 that we can see right here that it doesn't really get much better from there we have ash greninja that's a 132 145 so that's those are some of the areas where it will be a lot different salamence also going to have to be mega right there to be able to see a 145 into all that stuff so giving up items they're giving up something and at that 120 speed well if we're choice scarfed we're gonna be speedier than all of these pokemon right here while also having very close on that damage then we start getting to megas and other legendary pokemon so yeah like buzzwool is in a very good position even though it seems kind of awkward with the way that the speed breaks down with the stats and then stuff like that but then we have good coverage so we just kind of come in hit them with a really hard hit if they super mega resist us we just switch out and buzzwool is still going to be very consistent to be used ice punch coverage poison jab coverage leaf life leech life Again, if they're hitting us, we're tanking it up, and then we're still doing big amounts of damage on that Leech Life back. Superpower, we already talked about that. And then just bulk up sets. Well, if you stay out of special attacking Pokemon, you can actually play this Pokemon as a pretty amazing defensive tank. Because you can bulk up and then gain more defenses. And then you can also find a way to be a wall breaker as well. So I'm running Adamant Nature 2v2 into your speed investment. And what this is going to do is it's going to outspeed pretty much every tank. And that's really what you're looking for, is that, okay, you come in on tank, tank Pokemon, now you can either outspeed it on the bulk up, or outspeed it straight into damage, or outspeed it on a substitute. So if they're trying to status you, they're trying to do some silly things, well, you get a free substitute against the tank Pokemon that's trying to sit up, and then you get bulk ups and sit up for yourself, then you go leech life, heal everything back, ice punch, craziness, and this is where I had that realization with the stats, like, this is ridiculous! What this Pokemon can do with the 107 on the hit points and the 139 on defense and then it can still boost into attack and do insane amounts of damage like this adamant is more damage than this scarf while we're playing as a tanky Pokemon that's that's a really weird thing to think about and then you bulk up or you get the beast boost now you're at plus two and now you're just one-shotting everything as a somewhat slow Pokemon like sweepers can still outspeed you there still are those super effective threats from other Pokemon but if your opponent doesn't have many of those left well then you just sit in the buzzwall and then it doesn't go anywhere if they only have physical attackers and stuff and then they, it just sets up it's like all right I'll take a hit and I'll tank up that hit because I have the bulk up now and then everything your opponent has gets one shot in return from the leech life from the ice punch at the plus two at the plus three or plus whatever buzzwall ends up getting up to I just have leftovers just because also it might be worth running the lumberry that way if they try to status you you don't have to worry about the burn as much all right they burn you they tr they get something past your substitute you know something weird happens uh, you don't get the substitute in time because they outspeed with a scald or they outspeed pranks you into a will o -wisp with Sableye. Who knows what could happen? Lumberry is going to be that little bit of extra touch that that way, okay, they try to status you. You know, they outspeed you in status. Lumberry, now you go behind the substitute. Now you're super extra amazing free to do whatever you want. So that's a big thing right there. Also, I want to go and bring up like Glasscore. Pokemon like Glasscore. So, glass score at that is going to be at 226 speed. This is going to be at 257 speed maxed out. So, even glass score, they don't like putting too much speed investment. We just outspeed to hit it with an ice punch with our already maxed out 139 attack adamant nature. So, against tanky Pokemon, we're finding the coverage and we're going to be doing just, just amazing right there. I was also looking to an assault vest set. 
after running the damage calcs, which we'll see later on in this video, I, I wanted to try something silly, but I don't think there's anything here. Like, the power punch works. Like, if you can power punch into a lunge or a leech life, score the KO, start that attack snowball, you are going to be good. But that special defense is so low that even, like, maxing out special defense, even with that assault vest, super effective hits are still very threatening. And I feel our snowball is really awkward because now everything, or almost everything, is going to be outspeeding us. And this can be maybe an offset. I'm saying... It's usable, but not as amazing as you think it would be. Like with the, oh my goodness, assault vest into high defense already with hit points, and then you power punch once or power punch twice into beast boost, and then everything gets one shot. It, it's still pretty vulnerable, and that's why I'm thinking like just just play to your play to your strengths. If you have a defensive tank in the bus wall, remember you don't even have to go for that attack investment. You can go into hit point investment, or you can also be a little cheeky. You know, put that. Uh, around here that way you're getting like the most defenses and that's not interfering with your beast boost as much so we can still get high defense high yeah just full defensive tankiness almost and then we're also going to be able to bulk up get that damage get the huge amounts of attack as we beast boost and now we're going to be able to snowball insanely right here while being untouchable physically maybe the rocky helmet at that point as well and then you just run a special defense tank man time man time's amazing oh what's both Bu going to be worrying about Fire type attacks, well, you bring in the man time. Also, as I've kind of mentioned before, that uh, there are going to be some really interesting times where you might be playing Alola decks, or you might be playing completed national decks. With the Alola decks, you also have access to the Tentacruel, and Tentacruel is going to be an awesome Pokemon for you because it resists fairy, and it really threatens fairy type Pokemon. It uses acid spray, and then it hits them with like a sludge bomb or another acid spray, and fairy Pokemon go bye-bye. So that's gonna work out really well right there. Having a rock type or steel type Pokemon to tank up for those flying types will be pretty well, but Tentacruel, that's going to resist the big fire type hits, that's going to resist the big fairy type hits, and then you just kind of bounce between. Like, Buzzful doesn't really lose too much. Like, as long as it gets a bulk up or a leech life or something before it switches out, and it's still at relatively high hit points, it doesn't matter if it comes back in at 80-75% hit points against a physical Pokemon, because it's just not going to care. So you can kind of play around with the Buzzful. If they come and respond with it, just go Tentacruel. And now Tentacruel is going to be able to be a huge special defense wall. That means you're going to want to run like Black Sludge and stuff, and then you just go for a standard, you know, big special defense set. And Buzzful, if you are putting any defensive investment, you just switch it in physically, and then everything just gets walled. So Buzzful is actually a really safe Pokemon to bring in, as long as you are covering for its weaknesses, just like that. That was running some damage calculations. So neutral, Silvalli, we just have blank set and stuff. Silvalli, if it's running a physical set, the flamethrower attack won't be able to do too much to you. Leech Life is a two-hit KO. So right here, we have Adamant Nature, 252, 252. We get outsped, we hit that Leech Life. So no matter how much damage we take, so I just went and changed some things around the Silvalli. So let's just say Ice type Silvalli, Ice type memory, something like that. So we're using physical multi-attack, getting stab, adamant nature. I mean, 252 on the attack, even if we threw in a life orb, there's not going to be much damage coming out physically. So yeah, multi-attack does a little bit of damage, we leech life all of that back almost, and then multi-attack does some damage, we leech life it back, and now we're at plus one, so our next leech life will heal us up to full, and it's also showing that on super effective hits, superpower will go and clean it up. So this is going to be adamant nature on that bulky set, or again, like, I still think the choice scarf set works really well. You scarf into leech life, well now you're outspeeding Silvalli. Leech life, take a little bit of damage from uh, multi-attack, leech life, two hit KO, and then Silvalli goes away. Or you superpower, switch out, depending on what the opponent's next Pokemon is, or you can just stay in. That you just keep superpowering until things go bad, then you could switch out if you don't get the boost, and then you can bring Buzzwell back in for insane amounts of outspeeds and the same insane amounts of damage threat as well. I'm um, also looking into some other things, Kartana. Kartana has nothing. Kartana has nothing against the Buzzwool. So even if you're going like Scarf on the Buzzwool, you can find outspeeds on the Kartana. So that would be a jolly nature if we are running the Scarf. But even then, Superpower, that one shots it. Leech Life, close to a two shot on Kartana, even if we're going slower. Like this is where the Leech Life is just so good. So say we're running a bulkier set on that. Well, it outspeeds us. The best thing it's got is Smart Strike, and some Kartana aren't even running that. They're putting in other tech moves instead, or they might even be having the Swords Dance. So, it's, it's not going to do anything. Smart Strike is the best option for around 35%, and then you go and hit it for almost 50%. You almost hit it for half its health. There is a realistic chance to 2-hit KO, 71.5% chance to 2-hit KO the Kartana with this. So, and then you just heal up all of your health back off of the damage that you took. So, a scary Pokemon like that can be resisted pretty well by the Buzzwool, and just kind of shows that... We still resist quite a bit. 
and there's super effective hits while scary if we deal with the super effective hits and we bring Buzzwall in at the right time it's actually a really really good Pokemon and then just kind of showing some other things like tankiness wise this was on that assault vest weird kind of set if we max out special fins max out hit points into the assault vest Moonblast from a pre-marina pre uh, life orb modest special attack we can still survive it so showing like the worst case scenario and then I guess if we just go into something like the nil ego I like using nil ego as like a nice little example of damage and stuff the sludge bomb I mean that's still going to be like 30% right there on our assault vest and then we can go into a big superpower or we can just do whatever we want so I'd be like bulk up into some kind of move on the nil ego but it just kind of shows if you do run the assault vest there is some tankiness. There is a way to find that success. That you can still power up punch into a leech life against some average attackers and still feel really tanky. It's just that it's not going to be the safety that you're looking for against those super effective hits, which is why I think Assault Vest might not be super strong, but it does make it work. Like, if you can just get that plus one on something and then you can keep snowballing and then you get the beast boost and now you're leech lifing, well, now they, d they can't even respond to you with some special attacks. Um, let's bring in Salazzle. That Slazzle with a Fire Blast. Wow, the Fire Blast on your Salt Vest. Still not going to be a lot of damage right there. Now, we don't have a lot of super effective hits in return. But I'm just saying, like, if they're throwing out even, like, a ridiculous Fire-type attack, um, the Life Orb will change that damage calculation up quite a bit, though. So, yeah, it's kind of, like, similar to the uh, Pre-Marina. Worst-case scenario, like, huge damage, Life Orb boosting crazy stuff like that like that it's, if we don't have a damage option in return we are going to get bodied pretty hard but this is why you just it's just showing that instead of trying to cheese around it with an assault vest or something you can still switch out but if you are running assault vest set will work against other special attackers um let's see what the circuitry has because circuitry actually circuitry shows to be a really good example so say we get the power punch right here on the circuitry that's gonna be like a third of its health because circuitry is pretty frail but then we're at plus one and now our lunge which is the same damage as leaf life Leech Life will finish off the Zerkatry. So Zerkatry is doing roughly 80% of our health, and then we're going to be healing up 35% of it back off of the uh, Zerkatry. Well, maybe not 30%, but we're getting a good amount of our health back. So we'll still be with our Assault Vest in around a 40% hit point range while KOing the Zerkatry, even though we didn't get set up yet. So we can actually bring this Pokemon into the Zerkatry. Now we're at plus two. Now, if that opponent can't do like a two shot hit to us, if that Pokemon can't do more than 50% of our health back we just hit it with a we hit it with a leech life and then we get everything back so there's still a lot of chances to win right there I do like the lunge tech on this set potentially and there we go guys so Buzzwool actually never mind the assault vest set's still pretty good um just play to its weaknesses and then make sure its strengths excel and the opponent's not going to have too many options to use against it so if you guys enjoy the video hope you all have a nice day thank you very much for watching